All right, here we are. Uh, state of mind, if you like what you see, just hit this little thing right here, look. There you go. Uh, today I have Lindsay Godfrey. I pronounced that right, right? God, yeah, Godfrey. Godfrey. Oh, it's Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. And then uh, I thought, no, maybe it's spelled Godfrey. I don't know. Godfrey's cool. But that's a cool name, I got to tell you, because uh, if, it, if it were my name, I'd be like Maurice Devilman or something. You know? <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, listen, uh, I have her here, and she's been on uh, Bold and Beautiful, Days of Our Lives. And I got to tell you, what I do some, sometimes is I look at the, the, your, you know, the scenes of an actor, and I did that last night, and you did a, a scene, well, quite a few scenes, where you were pregnant, and I loved it. I oh. thought it was, because uh, you didn't overplay it. You kind of just did it real, which is the way it's supposed to be. Was I giving birth? No, oh. you, you were just talking to somebody, but oh. you were pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And I just, uh, I dug it. I really did. Thanks. So you got, you know, you got good acting chops and the whole thing. But uh, she's bipolar, mm -hmm. bipolar two. Yes. Um, I think we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. And she's she now I'm going to get choked up because she's doing she's works with an organization. She's going to tell you more about it. That uh, I when I saw pictures, it just moved me. And it's a beautiful thing. So we'll get into all that. Um, how you doing? I'm good. You're like already making me get all here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, I just couldn't, you know, but we'll get into it. So where are you from? I'm uh -huh. from Florida. <laughs> I'm from Florida. I moved here um, when I was 15. I lived in one of those weird actor houses with like other people no yeah <laughs> really yeah so you moved out when you were 15 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we we my we would basically come out for four months me we as a group in this house and i would live here for four months then i'd go home for two oh. there was like 13 kids in this one house and um it was yeah <laughs> you know i said this i think last state of mind I admire anyone who's just lived alone. Yeah. I I <laughs> never. I went from one mother to another mother. You did. You know, yeah. and I was like my son. And I said, it, but my son made fun of me because I don't know how to wash clothes. Oh no! And he's like, Dad, <laughs> Dad, no, seriously. I said, Joshua. <laughs> Relax, brother. I don't know, and that's just the way it is. He goes, oh, that's not right. For <laughs> my mom took me into the laundry room on my 10th birthday and showed me how to See? wash clothes and then told me that I was then responsible for my own clothes after that, and I didn't believe her, and I went to school for two weeks with dirty clothes <laughs> because really? I, thought she, I thought she was bluffing. <laughs> That's funny. But she was serious. So, yeah, my mom, and also I left home at such a young age. Damn, she how made you, me. How did you leave home at? I'm still yeah. in, in a little bit of a, a shock hearing <laughs> that you left home at 15. Now, were you, what is that thing where you get to be an Emancipated? adult? Emancipated? No, I, uh, my mom signed over guardianship to the manager I was living with. And then uh, I lived with a family and then she signed over a guardianship to Chrissy Metz which is from This Is Us. Yeah. Uh, she was my legal guardian for a little bit because we shared an apartment and she was older than me. Um, I don't know if she legally signed it over to her but then Chrissy just became my guardian so anything that needed to be filled out was Chrissy. And then I went home um, and I, I'm a cancer survivor so I went through chemo and all that and then came back out by the time then I was like an adult at I was 18 or about Damn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my wife got cancer. Did she really? Yeah, thyroid cancer. Oh. And the problem was, uh, geez, I'm so well, sorry. I don't know what, what, what you're doing to me, Lindsay, <laughs> but this is not going to be an, not, it's going to be an, an easy one, but it's going to be a hard one in terms of, I'm not going to be able to talk to you without crying, but. <laughs> we'll be a big mess together. <laughs> yeah, I guess we will. 
Uh, at the time that she had got cancer, I had already been in a horrible anxiety because I was supposed to do a movie in New York and I couldn't get on the plane. And, and so, but she got through it. That's awesome. You got, you're, mm -hmm. you're. Wow. Congratulations to your wife, by the way. Yeah, That's yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, but it's, for me, because of the way my mind thinks, and I think you're the same way I am. Mm -hmm. You think the, it's already, she was already dead in my mm. mind. Oh, okay. She was in a coffin already. Oh, no. So I couldn't get out of that. Yeah, I went, I was the opposite. My mom oh. is like the eternal optimist. And so I was oh. never allowed to feel bad for myself, ever. That's, so, that's a good thing. Yeah, it was great. Like I, and, and there was evidence. Like if I started to feel bad for myself, my counts would drop and I would get more sick. Um, and so it was just, my mom made us joke through the whole thing, and we constantly, wow. it was just constant jokes. The wind would blow, and I'd be like, is my hair messed up? <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so it was just, that was where it was. I was really not allowed to feel bad, but because of that, it took like a full year after being done with chemo that I, that it hit me, that I almost died. Like that, it took a really long time before I was like, oh my God, wait. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, I never thought about it until way after. Um, and then when I look back, I'm like, wow, that was... Hell yeah. That was whoa. Yeah, it was a whoa, <laughs> whoa and a half. Yeah. When I look at you, I, you know, it's funny because I, I, I keep thinking that I wish I had a scene with you. Yeah. An acting scene with you. Because <laughs> I, I, you have a certain... You're so interesting. To Thank me. you. Yeah, I, I, you just are. Even on your when I saw your Instagrams and stuff, yeah, I was like, she's so interesting. And you are. So I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about you got hit by a car. Yeah. Let's get into that, man. I got to get into that. Tell uh, me the whole shebang. Yeah, it's such a insane story. So it was 2015. Um, I had just had my daughter, she was about seven and a half months and luckily wasn't with me, which was really, oh, really man. rare. Like I, oh, I wow. had my kid, I wore my kid. She was everywhere. We'd be doing blocking and she'd be on my back or, you know, whatever. But she wasn't with you? Just by chance did, wasn't with me. And why? Um, I was, was going to an appointment. I was coming home from an appointment and uh -huh. she was with my nanny. Um, and I was going to go grab her, but they were at the park. I was, I was gonna swing and grab her and the nanny was at the park and I was like, great, just stay. And thank God they were at the park. Um, and I was just walking on the sidewalk and I see this like beamer picking up speed and I hear like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, you gotta be careful. Like I could just see it. Cause I was like, you better be careful. This traffic is really weird. Where was it? I was on Pico and Bundy. Um, I know Pico and Bundy. I used to live there. Yeah, it's or no Olympic and Bundy. Sorry, Olympic yeah, and Bundy, Olympic. and it's that big stretch where it's yes, like seven yes, yes, lanes. Yes, yes, And I was just on the sidewalk, and I kind of look, and I hear like the horn and like the, and I was like, oh man, those people are gonna get into an accident, <laughs> and they do. And the car, the kid driving the car, panicked and hit the gas instead of the brake, and he starts coming towards me and. Like in my head, I'm so worried about being too dramatic that yeah. I was like, I feel like I should run. But is it dramatic of me if I run? Like, run no, before. I definitely should run. Wow. And so I ran and it turns out like I can't. Hillary Swank, Karate Kid, the car. I just <laughs> I can't outrun it. So it hit me in the left leg and threw me to the right. And so I, my left leg is, was bent <gasps> in like a 90 degree angle. No. Yeah, and it, I so I broke. I had a compound fracture, so yes, I broke, and they are... went through the skin. My my shin bones, oh, my tibia, no. and then both of my ankles were dislocated. So neither of my feet were in the right direction. Like they were both facing backwards, but this one was also in a bent angle. So like no feet were going. The right way. But you're cool now. I'm totally cool. Like, but you had that positive attitude? Yeah, even then? it was just like, it's my mom. Feet behind you? Yeah, like, <laughs> like my, well, you know, I could probably get through. Yeah, my mom, lets us, <laughs> she, my mom genuinely does this thing. It's my favorite thing in the world where 
And she didn't do it then, but she calls it a pity party and she legitimately throws you a party and you get all of your favorite things and you're allowed that night to feel as bad for yourself as you want to. You're allowed to like just be as negative and grumpy wow. and nobody's allowed to tell you anything. And then you get it out of your system and you get up the next day and now you got to put your big girl panties on and go and be positive yeah. and try to get through it. So she let me be you know, kind of in my feelings, because I was like, this is not fair. What are the chances? Should I play the lottery? Who gets cancer and then hit by a car? It doesn't seem right. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Like, it was just ridiculous. And so it was a long healing process. I went back to Bold at the time in a wheelchair. And my daughter and I learned how to walk at the same exact time because um, she was seven months. That's amazing. Yeah. How does that, that was at the <laughs> same time? At the exact same time we were learning how to walk. Did you get it that, uh, did you film it and stuff? Yeah, well, I had filming of her and like filming of me and none of us like together. Yeah, that was, that's very, beautiful. Yeah, so, but yeah, they work great. I mean, I've. They, I have zero issues Those with aren't them. fake feet? They're Those not aren't... fake. These are all real. <laughs> that is spectacular. Yeah. Um, uh, now, bipolar. Let's talk yeah. about that. You know, um, I don't talk to very many people who are bipolar. No. So, uh, I believe we're, we're sis you're my sister <laughs> and I'm your brother because we, we're on our own you know how how do you feel about being bipolar what is it how, the, I, i'm proud of it yeah and obviously i'm proud of it because yeah, everywhere awesome. I, everywhere i <laughs> you know that's all i talk about right <laughs> but i'm proud of it because i think by me saying i'm proud of it it, it makes other people believe that it's not something that you should be ashamed of right it's not bad right mm -hmm. And of course, when I'm in a, well, I haven't had a breakdown in 30 years. I had three. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the lithium has worked for me great. That's amazing. But anxiety has been my Freddy Krueger. Mm. And when I'm, you know, you probably can relate. When I'm in that kind of anxiety, I'm not proud of it. I'm like, I don't want it yeah. anymore. Right. So how do you feel? Um... Well, I'm, I've got bipolar and I've got borderline at the same time. I've got borderline personality disorder. What is, that's, that's. I'm and so borderline personality disorder is a personality disorder that is um, described usually as a bunch of different things. There's like nine features that you have to meet five of. And I unfortunately meet like all nine of them. And it's <sighs> like, uh, it's uh sudden uh, kind of irrational anger outbursts uh, un uh stable. do you know that when you do it you're doing it or you just now do it? i do uh. you know like and it's it's you know there's all these different features that have to do with just kind of like poor reactions to things um so it'd be like it's kind of like being bipolar but within hours of one another so borderline yes yeah, so it has there's all these different features and um Unstable relationship with yourself, unstable relationships in general, um, like a bad self-image, mm -hmm, bad mm -hmm. uh, how you treat yourself. Um, unfortunately, things like self-harm are involved. Like um, cutting, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, so there's all these different. I'm gonna. I can't think of all nine of them off my head. But so it's kind of like. You know, you have your bipolar moods, which will last for weeks or months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then with borderline, it's more like you kind of shift throughout the day. And so it's kind of more of like a bad reaction to things. And so for me, when I got my diagnosis, I got both at the same time. Wow. And then all the other ones that, because I did this really long, like three hour test to get evaluated. And I got five diagnoses that came back and so I just was like I was so offended by the diagnosis <laughs> like right. so you're telling me I'm chemically unbalanced and there's something wrong with my personality right like, right um, yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> it's like both <laughs> it seems rude so when you let, let's say <laughs> at work or whatever let's mm -hmm. say I mean it's no secret that I've I've lost my shit 
Sure. At work. Okay. In the past, especially. I'm oh, I'm, yeah. I'm older now and I'm yeah. more <laughs> <Same>. mature. <laughs> but I've lost it a lot. Uh, but I, I don't have that, yeah. right? So maybe like at work you were got pissed at something and you, bah, you just yeah. go off like real quick. My thing really was like, mine was always very self, uh, it was very turned into myself. So like if I was really kind of feeling an episode, it was more that I shut down. Oh. And it's really jarring for people because I'm this all the time. Da, 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 da. Ah. But for me, my scariest emotion is anger. And at, and then at work, I'm too scared to show people how angry I am, but I definitely get edgy. And I've gotten edgy with people at work, and I've had moments yeah. with people where I've clapped at them very hard, and it's embarrassing. <laughs> you know, and work was hard because if I'm kind of going through a depression with bipolar and the borderline decides to add on to it, then I'm just gone. Like it's oh just, my goodness. you know, nothing. I'm hopeless and there's nothing worth living for. And I don't understand why I'm doing this and I don't want to be doing this and I don't want to talk to anybody and I don't want to do this scene and I don't want to talk to this person and God, I don't want to hug them. And you know, it's, so it's, that was the hardest thing. Yeah. And not knowing why for a really long time. Because I was diagnosed with, bipo or with bipolar when I was 21. Me too. Were you? 20, 22, yeah. Yeah, and then I had somebody say, I don't think you're bipolar. And I went, great, I don't have to take medicine. And so then I spent a decade just getting worse. Oh my goodness. And just not understanding and like watching my relationships with people change and also like watching my relationship with alcohol change. <sighs> And you were self-medicating. I was really self-medicating. And the more you self-medicate with like a depressant, the worse it gets. Um, and so really kind of the best thing that could have ever happened to me was having like a nervous breakdown at the end of 2019 and finally being like, I, I cannot control my emotions. I don't feel like myself. I didn't know who I was anymore. What, what, what is a nervous breakdown to you? What happened? Um, I, I, li I was just yeah. in a place like I, I broke down. I was having anxiety attacks all the time. I was hurting myself. I was just not in Ooh. it. I was drinking really bad. Um, was, and I, there, was, there, was there any God and it related? No. Mine not, was yeah, always God related. Mine's not, I'm not religious at all. So it was, do you mean like when you are manic, you get like, yeah, like the yeah. You know, I thought I saw God in my ah. room. Okay. I thought uh, God, God was everywhere. Sure. And it was like, and and the devil. Oh, okay. I always believe with with it's my thing, but that when I go through a nervous breakdown, it's God and the devil fighting each other. I see. And most of the time, God wins. Okay. And then sometimes the devil wins, and you kill yourself. Right? Oh, God. yeah. Wow. So, and I've always, in all honesty. I've always, uh, God's always uh, saved me. In this last one last year, I didn't know if he was going to. And he did, but very close. Oh my God. So that's, I mean, you know, that's something we both can relate to. And, and But I don't have the other. Yeah. That would probably <laughs> cruel. But you now you don't do you drink now or mm -mm. good for you. I don't drink. Yeah. I don't want to, man. I well, yeah, I can't on one of my medicines. Oh. Um, but I quit because I wanted to give myself a chance to get my medicines introduced to myself without anything else in my yes, system. Yes. Yes. And then it became I got protective of my health. Like originally it was I'll quit for a month and start my medicine. And then it was, well, let me give my medicine three months to get into my system. And then, you know, I can yeah. revisit it. And then it became, I feel so control. I started to feel in control of my mental health and my emotions. And I just got really scared and really protective about yeah. adding anything yeah, else yeah. in. And so now it's been like a year and a half and I don't miss it. Occasionally I miss the kind of the 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 routine of it. Yeah, you I know? get it. Like, you know, I miss sitting and but having you know, a glass of wine. But you know, I told you I had my daughter got married, mm. Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> and every party that I've had, 
Big parties. I, yeah. I used to throw a lot of big parties. I'd be drunk. Right. Okay. And I'd have to, and I, most of the time I would do a speech. Well, when you're drunk and you do a speech, you know, it's 80% good and, and 20% what the fuck did I say, right? And 100% I thought it was amazing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and since I don't drink, and in the wedding last, I don't know what it was, two, three weeks ago, was the first time ever at a big party that I didn't drink, and it was the greatest. Because you're in the moment. And I don't know about it. you, but I get dark when I, I become Tony Montana, you oh, know, really? in Scarface. Okay. And I don't like that. My, my wife doesn't like it. Yeah. Maybe my kids think it might, might be cool. <laughs> yeah. But I don't like the feeling I have. Because mm -mm. I'll be sitting in the corner over there just kind of, you know, doing this. And so, but when, when you're present and you're not drinking, I'm happier. So why do I, why would I want to drink? Exactly. And I like being able to remember the night. That's it. Too. You know, like I like being able, I like now being the person where I'm like, no, no, no. You said that thing last night. I promise you that person's hey. right. You did say it. <laughs> like, right. Because I get to be the voice of reason, whereas I was never the voice of reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so to, I don't want to end this, but because you're such a, I don't audit anything anymore. I just say what comes. I was going to say you're such a delight, and I don't. I never say that word, <laughs> but delight is what comes to my mind. Thank you. Um, and I know it's going to be a tough one. This one coming up. This subject. You do something for an organization. Tell me about it. What? Inara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Inara stands for the International Network for Aid, Relief, and Assistance. And we provide pro bono uh, medical care to children living in refugee camps, um, mostly Syrian children who had to flee and are living now in Lebanon or in Turkey. Um, it's uh, the founder is uh, Ar Arwa Damon, who's a CNN reporter who's stationed in Turkey. Um, and after just seeing when she was reporting these horrible injuries that these children were facing. Um, she decided to do something about it, and she started this incredible foundation um, that we always need. <laughs> we always need donations for. Um, we added mental health into our program recently because, um, you know, the majority of these injuries that these children are facing are in the camps themselves, from having to cook off of open fires and things like that. So a lot of the burns that they've experienced are from the flames being open and their beds have caught on fire or their tents have caught on fire. Um, you know, we had a family where the father was trying to keep his daughter warm and they froze to death. Um, and it's just these horrific things. And a lot of the things that these children need is like scar release surgery where, um, you know, they've been burnt really bad and now their arm can't move um, and so we have to have the surgery to release the the damage we had a little girl recently who had shrapnel in her leg and walked for the first time in four years because of the surgery. oh is that the thing on the on your, on yeah, your Instagram yeah she's just and I mean what Arwa does is just incredible she's you know on the ground reporting in that area for everything that's going on um, but what we do is really really wonderful stuff and I talk to my daughter about it a lot so that we under, she understands um, how lucky she is, but also to have compassion for other people who are in situations that they have, they're just trying to live, you know? And I can't think of anything more devastating as a mom than to not be able to let my kid be a kid. Yeah. And some of these kids have to leave their stuffies. And like, my kid has a lovey that has been with her since she was born. And the idea that that would be a luxury, which some of these kids, it's a luxury to leave they have to leave their stuffies because it's not necessity. And so we've added in mental health because number one, just having to flee and having no consistency is already such a, um, takes such a toll on your mental health as such a tiny little person, let alone these injuries. Yes. And then, you know, getting made fun of in school because they have burns all over them or, you know, or, or deformed in some way because of something horrific that happened and we work in tandem with other organizations like Red Cross, and so we pick up where they kind of leave off. So Red Cross uh, covers your medical care if you've been directly affected, meaning your house was bombed or you were harmed in some way from a bombing or um, a shooting or something. We had a little girl who was shot in the jaw 
And so they'll cover for the surgery, but then we come in and cover things like the dental implants. Or if maybe your house wasn't bombed, but your neighbor's house was bombed and you turn to run and you run into your mom who was holding boiling water and you get burnt, we'd cover you. Whereas that wasn't a direct effect of the war. It was a side effect. Yes. Of well, how, else. how about the, the mental health part of... Uh, like you said, you know, you got a kid who who's, who looks the way they look, and th th but this is a subject now that I'm gonna really I'm gonna bombard it. That the kids in school, and especially that which is wor just worse, there needs to be mental health in school. Oh my gosh, yes. What is I mean, you know, okay, so you can do thirty push-ups. Or ten pull-ups, how you know, that's cool. Yeah. But then you got kids like like I was a little bit not I don't not a lot because I was a pretty popular kid, tough and stuff, and I got through it. But there was there was moments that I knew in in, in high school that something's not right with me. Yeah. Just not a lot, but it yeah. was moments, right? And just think of other kids. I get a oh man. I got a kid who writes me who, who's been bullied and, and he writes me and he has anxiety and this and this and that and we still write each other back, right? He writes me, I write him. And then I find out because we've been writing and I tell him kind of, and I always say get professional help, you know, because yeah. I don't want to be getting in trouble for something that happens. But the beauty of it is, and I'm not saying it's because I've been... But one day, one, one day he sent me a painting. And it's a beautiful painting, like, a, like Picasso. And I said, that's your calling, man. Keep doing that. Don't stop. But what if a kid doesn't have that? And it's just wasted. Mm -hmm. And then he's got to deal with the anxiety and the whole thing on his own. Yeah. And it's a, it's a definite big problem. Uh, not only is there such a lack of resource for our young people, there's just a lack of resource, particularly in our poor communities. Like getting help is, is the right of the privileged, really. It's not a, it's not a right, right of right. all the people. It's such a massive problem in our, in our country, A, how we approach mental health, but B, the, the limited access, access to resources for help. And there's such a direct link between um, poverty and mental health issues, and let alone to then leave them with no resources to Jeez, get help. My goodness. It's just, it's such a devastating thing. I knew very early as well that something was wrong. I, um, I dissociate a lot, and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I would just go missing. And the main thing I knew was that my, um, my mania wasn't normal. Yeah. And that was the thing that I got made fun of the most, where people were always like, what are you on drugs? Because yes. I just zing, zing, yeah. zing, 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 yeah. and I'm loud, and I physically can't. I was, between my anxiety and the mania, I was like a chihuahua at all times Ooh. in school. I just was just yeah. always shaking. Yeah. And was, you know, the anger stuff for me didn't start coming until like in my 20s. And right, then right. it got vitriol and very scary that's the scariest thing in the world to me is to be mad because yeah. of how big it is for me but there is such a taboo especially with our kids the greatest thing in the world is this new generation below me being so open about yes. having their mental health issues and that's why it felt important to talk about it yes. and i felt safe at least in the number of one which was you yes i was like I, I didn't know how I felt. I was like, I may never work again, right? To be like, hey, I am off my rocker a little bit. I'm delightful, but <laughs> off my rocker a little bit. Right. Um, I was really nervous. And I remember talking to um, everybody that I was really tight with about it and saying, like, I, I want to do it. And um, but just also going, I may never ever work as an actor again because of these things. But it felt more important to say to somebody that maybe watches me or follows me yes. like hey that's right it doesn't discriminate that's right and here i am and you like watching me do something and i have it that's right and there's someone else on another show who's yeah. amazing who is 
been the the you yeah. are gh right yeah. like you are and and has been successful for how long yeah. have you been over there well close to 30 years right and have been successful on there for and that i've been talking about time. mental health for 30 you know. and that's what kind of gave me the confidence to do it where i was like at least if somebody just goes okay i'm not alone then it was worth being yes you and, know. and and to put a, a cap on this I just want to say you have been incredible. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and exactly what you just said of, of talking about it and opening up about it, you're absolutely true. You, you, the, I can guarantee you what people are going to say about this state of mind, you're going to be like, holy man. And that, that's one of the reasons I've always continued, you know, I always continue to, to speak because sometimes I got to be honest, I, I wanted to maybe say, I think it's time for me to, you know, I'm like the poster child, <laughs> bipolar and it's like this and that. And then, I, you know, you start reading things and the main thing is what you just said and that's what made me keep going actually is the people watching this or anything that you do about mental illness, they have to feel that they're not aliens. Right. They're just, because we're talking about it, then they go, oh, so the, I, I'm kind of like that and this and this and that. And it's just so helpful all the way around. I and, agree. And I, I want to say that uh, we may have to do a part two on this one. We can do a part two always. <laughs> I mean, this has been fantastic. I didn't know I was going to get so emotional. But, uh... <laughs> That's why I think it's so important to to talk about it and to normalize it. Because, like what you said, like I also want people to know that, like, yes, I'm bipolar, but I also thought that the stars were shining brighter because I was outside, right? And right. I thought that there were listening devices in my house more than once. So yeah. it, it is one of those things where you're like, it doesn't discriminate. But I also am a person who is a mother I'm a single mom which yes. I've been my entire life or my child's entire life um, I have a wonderful relationship with her father I have I have a great group of small tiny little group of friends that That's I keep right. yeah. you know and I have a wonderful relationship with them I am an actor who I've been on TV and I've yeah. had shows and all those things where you like I'm a totally normal you you we both have lived a very <laughs> productive life yeah. And anyone can. Yes. And that's why we have to. And this is why I encourage. We started out like this. We have to be proud yeah. of this. Because look, I w you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be who we are without it. No. And I know when we're in it, we're like, oh, I'd, rather not, I'd rather not be proud. I'd rather just end this. Right. right? But we, we, the, the main thing that people should get out of it is it's, it, be proud of having mental illness. Well, because it wouldn't be you. If you... It's not. And you know what? That's why we're interesting. Because that guy over there who hasn't been through anything, he's boring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Hey. Thank you so Thank much you, for man. having fantastic, me. fantastic, <laughs> man.